I invite um, this Dorothy Devakurubai to give the next talk on uh, enhanced and uh, efficient communication. She is a professor, College of Nursing, CMC Velo, and has got 24 years of experience in CMC. She has done, uh, no, um, uh, she has led the mid mid midwife led antenatal care in Sydney and conducted nurse led clinic in um, the CMC. And she has also guided several uh, research projects in CMC Velo. She has several publications to her credit in national and international journals. And she is also an examiner for undergraduates and postgraduate exams. I have great pleasure in inviting Dorothy Devakrubai to give the next uh, talk. Uh, thank you, sir, for uh, the opportunity given. Um, and I also thank the organizers of the committee uh, for uh, giving me an opportunity to share uh, on communication, uh, which is enhanced and effective. Thank you once again. Uh, for the organizers and for our, uh, sir for introducing me. Just to give you a review uh, of uh, communi what communication is exactly is imparting or ex uh, exchanging of information by speaking, writing or using some other media. Uh, it's like um, you uh, communicate what uh, you would like to do. Here you can just see the process quickly. The sender gives an information that is the message uh, which is uh, received by the receiver and then the receiver gives the feedback to the sender and there is some kind of noise that is involved in it and uh, here there is encoding and decoding of this message that is taking place between uh, the sender and the receiver. So the types of uh, communication are uh, verbal and non-verbal and uh, you'll also see like a uh, the nonverbal is uh, oral and uh, written and uh, the verbal, sorry, the verbal one and the nonverbal is appearance, body language and sounds. So uh, actually um, these are the main uh, things uh, like types of communication that uh, we have already, we know and uh, we are um, the, like consciously or unconsciously using these um, types of communication in uh, many um, situations all, almost every aspect of our life and um, levels of communication it is intrapersonal uh, where it is within us we sometimes uh, we uh, sit and think and we try to communicate within ourselves uh, oneself what you know what we want to do or uh, what uh, review as to what we have done and uh, what we need to correct or I must do something um, the next day or what should I have done instead of not uh, what should I have not done instead of doing like that. So uh, things like this we uh, communicate that is intrapersonal and interpersonal between uh, two people or uh, between people we have interpersonal communication. So we want to share our views or we want to give some information to other person and um, things like that. And uh, the other type of communication, uh, levels of communication is one-to-one. -one. So between two people. So uh, directly we uh, get in touch with the person whom we would like to communicate and exactly the information that I would like to give to the other person, I, I will say. You know, uh, say like my subordinate, I would want to give or um, uh, between the nurse and the patient relative or the nurse and the patient. So that is that will be like one-to-one. And the group communication will be uh, a common, uh, for a common understanding, they will um, share the information. Like uh, you would like to give some group information or group education to a group of um, uh, patients, or uh, you want to communicate some information that uh, that particular um, level of people need to know. Okay, such uh, information is for uh, small groups or mass. Mass communication, we all know, we uh, get uh, information through various mass media uh, that is available now and um, uh, not, uh, uh, you know, not one is uh, uh, like it is not less than the other. So you can uh, get varied informations. Nowadays, uh, there is nothing that, uh, that we can uh, hide from the patient uh, that they uh, don't know, we, like not like before. Nowadays, it's like uh, they just get the information uh, just in one click. They get the information and uh, they have lots of questions uh, towards you know, what is being done 
why it is done is it necessary that uh, we need to do certain things so such kind of uh, information they just get from mass uh, communicative methods um to the next one what is effective communication so uh, now we were seeing about the uh, general thing about communication but uh, what is effective communication effective communication is more than exchanging the information so it is about understanding the emotion and the intense intention behind the information so it's not like you are giving some information and it's just going to be uh, something which has no life we say that words have life some uh, i we even speak like you know please think and talk you cannot um, take back your words and uh, some, your words give life to a person it can also cause uh, them you know to die or things like that death it can uh, bring both it can give life and it can cause death also so uh, uh, it's like effective communication is how uh, your words have emotions in them and what is the intention behind these uh, informations that we are uh, going to communicate so if we go um, uh, into a little more details about the effective communication this is to convey the message clearly if the message has to be conveyed clearly we need to listen and also the other person who has conveyed the information needs to understand that he is heard and he is been understood okay so i uh, some uh, information is being communicated by the patient to the nurse or the nurse has communicated some information to the patient so the uh, patient has to listen or the nurse has to listen it is vice versa whoever is communicating and then they'll have to also uh, perceive that um i am being heard so if i have given some information i should perceive that i am being heard and also i what i have told is understood by the other person so many times uh, when i communicate i always ask a word did you understand what i told told you just now so uh, sometimes it's like that no we don't get back any response or we don't um, perceive that the listener uh, or the receiver has got what i have told so uh, sometimes it's not like that when you have communicated you know that your communication is well understood and uh, you will be having a positive response for that or what has to be done if some uh, uh, work needs to be done or uh, if there's something that has to be done out of the communication you need to get a result then that will happen immediately so that kind of um, response or the feeling is there with the person who's communicated that is the speaker but then uh, sometimes like it's not so so we need to get an acknowledgement um, from the other person telling that have you understood did you listen so words like this we uh, keep uh, using in between our um, in our language uh, that's become something more uh, nowadays Uh, maybe because there are various things that uh, hinder or they come and um, you know people are interested not in uh, talks but whereas in other things other ways of uh, communication so this is what is effective communication so i was telling you that uh, uh, i use words like this so that means that there is some barrier to this effective communication what is the barrier so that is stress and out of control emotion sometimes i am so stressed i don't communicate very effectively so that the receiver has received the information what um, you know what has to be done like you can see here uh, do you hear the words i say the person responds the ones i like i heard the rest i have left okay it's like that whatever i want i have heard but the rest of it whatever you have told i have not heard so it's like that because of uh, we are all stressed and we all go out of control with our emotions sometimes we can't handle it so in that case we find that we just communicate uh, tons and tons of information and this information is not uh, effective at all and at the end you find that the person has yes. just spoke okay uh, and uh, nothing has come out of it or the people if uh, they are just sitting there and watching uh and then uh, they have not understood anything from what is being communicated like um maybe a big um a rally 
okay a person is just standing over there and he's just speaking speaking and speaking endless things but then finally you find that uh, people have just been there maybe for some incentive purpose or then they have just uh, gathered there for the number count or for the head count or whatever and then they just vanish away but finally what happened to this whether something has uh, been communicated uh, whether something is uh, there we have not understood that at all then the next one is the lack of focus we are not interested in what we are actually supposed to listen okay so like uh, say for example i have uh, communicated something to the uh, patient okay in a group or even by um, a one to one talk then you find that um, the there is a lack of focus on the side from the uh, listener so you will find like that is a barrier not at all interested in our talk sometimes i when i go and speak to the patient the patient is so much engrossed because there's been some family problem so they are not interested in what i am talking and then they are just uh, interested in uh, not i should not say interested but then they are so engrossed they are so much involved in what happened to them you no know, the um, family member didn't turn up or they had a, um, a fight or they were quarreling things like that or they are not having enough money to pay or um, so on and so forth so they are not the focus is not in uh, listening to what uh, we say because you know it's something some important information about uh, your food or uh, you know it's a healthy food and uh, you need to have this uh, uh, test done and this is how it's going to be all these informations are uh, not at all going to be uh, um, absorbed by the listener and then if we see uh, it is inconsistent body language so like um, you can see in the picture like how they are uh, the speaker is speaking and then we are in, involved in something else and the communication is not going to reach them so we just keep talking and then they are involved in uh, the work of their own or uh, their body language says that they are not interested and that again is a barrier then the next is uh, uh, body language itself like it's a negative body language that we are giving so it's like you know I, i'm over uh, um, this uh, um, it's too much for me or i'm not uh, um, uh, going to listen to you okay i know what about all this i know earlier things like that when people get such a feeling then they show a negative uh, body language and that's another barrier for effective communication so what are the skills effective communicative skills that we need to adopt we have to become a eager listener so how do we become an eager listener not that we need to keep on listening okay at least we need to like what information is being given and that information is actually uh, uh, necessary like you know the patient is telling something sometimes when the patients are expressing then the nurse is uh, like she is at the end of the shift so she is uh, trying to complete her job and then you are not listening to what the patient is telling but the patient has actually communicated some important information after that then we think about it when we get back and we think oh yeah the patient has communicated like this and then uh, uh, that could have if we, we had given a listening ear then definitely we could have saved the patient or we could have prevented few uh, some complication that's awaiting um, her or him or whatever so that uh, information uh, we did not listen to so become an eager listener so if you have to become an eager listener what to do eager listener focus fully on the speaker so we have to actually uh, the person is talking to us we need to concentrate on the person rather than uh, just be there and do not listen at all and then you uh, for name sake you are just uh, waiting over there and the person is speaking the patient is speaking and the nurse is just nodding her head and trying to uh, focus on something else so they are not focused fully on what the patient is talking to them or sometimes it's the vice versa the other person is not listening to what we are telling and uh, they are not uh, they are engrossed in some other uh, thought 
and uh, usually they say that have the right ear for listening uh, most of the time like you know we are so much keen and uh, most of us have the dominant side as the right so it is uh, in um, told right you favor the right ear going on to the next you avoid interrupting or trying to redirect the conversation to your concerns so don't uh, try to um, you, we are concerned with something but then when we are listening we are uh, uh, thinking that we over listen so we just try to uh, put a full stop to what they are telling or we say that uh, okay now uh, this is what i am trying to get information from you i think it's more than enough like you no know, what you have told is enough now you come back to this particular thing of course we need to um, direct them but sometimes we get them away from the important aspect of the talk that uh, the particular person is talking about and uh, going on to the next is show your interest in what's being said so you have to be interested when we are uh, showing an interest in what is being said then definitely the other person feels that oh somebody is listening to me and definitely i can actually uh, communicate well with them and i will be able to express more i can uh, give lots of information to them if not uh, you will see like okay they are not listening to me and uh, they get an uh, they get that uh, view that no sir, nobody is listening to me or that person is not listening to me then it's a waste of time communicating to uh, the person and we don't communicate enough then the next is trying to set a uh, try to set aside judgment so like when you are listening we already have some view about the other person and we say okay anyway you are like this but for name sake i am just sitting and listening like so that judgmental attitude do not judge anybody so that you uh, definitely become a, a good listener and the communication becomes more effective because you know that time it's easy to communicate sometimes we uh, just label many times i have heard people telling very difficult to handle no not at all good the language is very bad and um, uh, any time you go there and very the patient is very much um, not communicating in the right language does not want to speak does not look at your eyes so many things they uh, communicate so these things try to set aside uh, the judgment and then continue the listening going on to the next provide feedback okay provide feedback as you listen you always give a feedback sometimes we don't uh, uh, respond at all um like over the phone you keep listening but then you uh, don't give a feedback again then there's uh, a want for a feedback where they say uh, hello are you there um are you listening to me uh, sometimes it happens even when uh, it is direct um, communication we um, just look at them then there is no uh, response either in verbal or non verbal communication we would like to get in uh, terms of non verbal communication as well like a nod of a head or uh, you um, raise your eyebrows you blink or whatever so such kinds of uh, responses or verbal communication of response is necessary and that has to be done if we are eagerly listening the next skill that we need to develop as an effective communicating person is to pay attention to non verbal communication so we need to actually learn um the ways of uh, ways by which people communicate using non verbal communication so in that aspect if you see uh, you we have to be aware of individual differences sometimes uh, the response may, may be uh, different in each person but the uh non verbal cues they are using will be the same like so we uh, it will be like the each person we have to respect them as an individual we cannot uh, con consider the uh, non verbal communicative cues that are being used as common so uh, if we can uh, see um, the communication is like um, um, it um, it is in a group a kind we have to consider that and then we cannot like say for example there are people raising hands then you have to consider what it is like or if you think that 
uh, they all are making a noise. Then what it is about? Then we have to check. And the next one is use nonverbal signs that match with your words. So you have to check whether your nonverbal uh, communication is matching with the words. Sometimes it doesn't. So we say yes and then we uh, nod uh, like as if it is a no. Sometimes we will, um, as if we are uh, asking them to come and then we, but we actually want them to go away. So there are so many things that doesn't match at all. So we have to actually be very careful when we have or use these nonverbal uh, forms of communication. And again, if you see, adjust your nonverbal signs according to context. Make sure that it is matching with the context. So your uh, context of communication should be matching with the nonverbal signals that we are using. Sometimes we are um, we are uh, we say that we are interested, but then we are uh, so much like not interested, and we frown and uh, we try to look away, uh, things like that. So according to the context, we need to use nonverbal communication. Avoid negative body language. That is a must. When we uh, are um, having to have effective communication, we need to avoid negative body language, which always signals that um, you know communication is not going to continue or the other person is not interested and that can't become effective at all. The next skill that we need to develop is to keep our stress under check. Sometimes this communication is very much dependent on the stress levels. So we have to make sure that when we are stressed, most of the time we are supposed to not communicate at all. But then how do we communicate? Uh, some, we cannot get away from it. We cannot say, no, I'm not going to talk at all. I'm not going to give any reaction. No, uh, at that point. So how do we keep a check on our stress levels. So you can use some tactics like, you know, you just make sure you give a little time, okay, or you try to uh, make, uh, pick up the um, positive points uh, from the spe uh, speech, or you try to uh, make sure that you uh, try to recollect uh, actually what you are stressed about and try to get away from it. And pause to collect your thoughts. That's what I was telling about. Make sure that you think about it, what you are actually stressed about. Is that, uh, is that going to um, create, you know, uh, uh, going to get you, find you some answer now? Is that going to uh, enhance what you are uh, trying to communicate? Things like that, you can actually uh, think about it. You know, whether you are going to get away from the stress now because you are just thinking about it and that is going to give you some uh, form of, uh, uh, you know, uh, effectivity in the communication skills. And then try to make one point. Make sure that you don't um, uh, give, when you are stressed, don't give too much of information or don't try to gather a lot of information. So don't try to pass on. Make sure that it is just one information. Deliver your words very clearly. Don't be in a hurry. And uh, we should not uh, make sure that uh, we just say words that uh, will have, you know, I meant this way, but you understood the other way. It can't be like that. We have to make sure that the words are very clear and wrap up with a summary. Make sure that this is what we spoke. That's the, uh, on, uh, like at the end, at the final, to conclude, this is what is uh, we were talking about. This is what we need to do. And uh, look for a humor situation and uh, 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 humor situation in whatever uh, we are finding when we are stressed about. Many times we think back and see that there's a lot of humor in that and be willing to compromise. Don't make sure that uh, you are going to always um, get over it. Agree to disagree. Sometimes we need to agree to disagree. The other last one point is assertive your, uh, assert yourself. Make sure sure that you um, uh, uh, show your valuable points, know your needs and wants, express negative thoughts. Sometimes you have to uh, really tell, this is what is my thought about like, receive feedback positively, take feedback with the positive ideas, learn to say no, and have an empathetic assertion. So you have to make sure that you, um, you are empathetic, but you have to be assertive at that point. 
then you have to say like no you have uh, not done it but then you are able to do it okay you have not done what i expected but then you have to do it like that uh, it it has to be the work has to be finished that is the escalating uh, assertion and practice assertiveness make sure that is a real uh, assertiveness is something that is really needed it can't be that uh, the nurse can't be assertive that has to be there and practicing assertiveness we all need to accept and we have to uh, actually allow for it now finally coming to the enhanced communication it is understanding the recognition of limitations of others so what are the limitations if we see breaking bad news handling adverse events handling aggressive patients or family handling patients undergoing complicated yeah, interventions acceptable behavior and the hand of communication and reconciliation of medication so in all these we need to make sure that we use all the skills that we learned for effective communication and then use it at the right time in the right place thank you for your patience listening and thank you so much